Hi everybody and um, welcome back to the channel. I am going to do my reading wrap up for February. I read, I think it was eight books. I usually show you on my tablet but it's playing up. I can't get the pictures to load up bigger. Oh, it's done it this time. Hang on, there we go. I was going to do it on my phone, but here. So, let's, uh, oh, let's get rid of that. Let's do it. So the first book I read in February was called The Secret of Chestnut Hall and this was by Olivia Swift. It was an ebook that I read. Um, basically it's about this girl who runs a landscaping company and uh, this new guy, uh, Evan, who is a mountain climber, buys Chestnut Hall and wants her to landscape the garden. While in there they discover um, lots of little secrets and mysteries, um, uh, potentially a murder, there's all, all sorts going on. It's a really good book. I enjoyed it. I think I only gave it three stars because it's one of those really samey, samey, cosy mystery ones. But it was a nice quick read. It's only 108 pages. So yeah, I did enjoy it. I liked the characters. Um, I liked the idea of the mystery. I think it could have been developed a bit more and maybe then there could have been, it would have got a higher a score and it would have obviously been a lot longer than 108 pages but I did enjoy it, it was a nice start to, an easy start to the month and I say it was a nice easy start to the month because after that I took on The Stand by Stephen King as you can see the spine's a bit cracked it's a bit uh, curly it's even got the cat attacked it yes there's the cat marks on it on, on this page there's a hole in it where the cat had it um, so yeah <laughs> So, but I was still put it on a Stephen King shelf. So what I will say is, as you know, The Stand is about a pandemic that is created in a lab in America and it escapes. Um, one person who, instead of just staying and dealing with the fallout from this thing and thereby containing the pandemic, decides to run. And as he runs and crosses uh, state lines and borders, he spreads this pandemic, this illness, which is very like COVID to lots of other people in the sense that it starts people coughing and sneezing and it's a flu symptoms of flu and they actually call it a super flu so it kills 75 percent of the population at this point and they're all scattered around the world and around america now in america you have that they start having dreams of um an old black woman who's called grandma or something like that and a group of people drift towards her because she's uh sort of like the salvation figure and then you get the evil character the devil and other people are drawn to him and it's two opposing sides what are they going to do who's going to win who's going to live who's going to die what happens at the end because this evil man um this lucifer type character he's always with us he never dies he'll die and then he'll be uh, he'll be reincarnated or reappear somebody somewhere else and it will all start again not necessarily with a pandemic so what would have been really horrific if they'd have set it in um eastern europe <laughs> where he reimagines later rather than in somewhere like brazil I really enjoyed this book. Like I said, it was. It took me a long time to read. I think it was like 14 days, which for me is a very long time. 14 or 15 days. But I really did enjoy it. I did give it four stars. Actually, I gave the first book four stars as well. It was better than I thought, remember. But yeah, I am still enjoying my Stephen King Odyssey. Looking forward to continuing that in March. Then I read uh, one of the oldest books uh, I've got on Jack the Ripper, in fact, not, if not fact, the oldest book. This was first published in 1965. This is The Crimes and Times of Jack the Ripper by Tom Cullen. Um, it's a brief overview of the case. Doesn't give you any definitive answers to who, who the killer is. It's very enjoyable. There are photographs, but at this point, the horrific picture of Mary Kelly had not been either published or discovered. I think it had been discovered, but not published. Um, because of how horrific it is uh, which is good but I enjoyed it it was a nice little read it didn't take too long and it was just really 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 good and I gave that one four stars a lot of four stars this month I've got another ebook coming up which I am going to show you in a second okay so I also read oops uh, sorry all my notifications are appearing on the tablet because I haven't used it for Another one by Olivia Swift from the, Bo the Blooms and the Bones and Stones cosy mystery series. This one is Secret of the Jewel Shop and in this uh, one of the girls that we found, met in the first book is open up a jewellery shop of jewellery she makes herself 
and there's a ghost in the shop and she discovers who the ghost is and why she's haunting. Turns out that her lover, her fiance, went away to tell somebody that he was going to marry this woman and something happened to him, he never got back, it was a natural disaster, he wasn't murdered or anything. Um, and so he died and was buried elsewhere and they go to his grave and bring him back and he uh, is reunited in spiritual form with his true love. So that's it, that's all there is to it. Again, another good one from that, but I gave that one three stars because the stories are very, very samey samey with these two characters, a male and a female, uh, who we met in the first book, coming together and falling in love while they solve the mystery. And it happens, seems to happen in all of these books to the point that I actually DNF'd for the time being book three, because yeah, I just don't want to read that. <laughs> I don't know, you know, you get to the point where you get a bit bored of them. I will go back to the series at some point during the year, I would imagine. So next is... Journal page. When Marilyn Met the Queen by Michelle Morgan. Here it is. So in July 1956, Marilyn arrived in London on honeymoon with her husband Arthur Miller to make The Prince of the Showgirl with Laurence Olivier. It was meant to be a happy time, but it didn't turn out this way. So this chronicles um, the making of The Prince of the Showgirl from show go from the beginning to the end and a little bit beyond um things that happened uh during the filming the way that the country the uk went mad for marilyn while she was here with um balls in her honor even though she didn't go because she couldn't because she was filming uh fancy dress competitions dance competitions have you got marilyn's figure competition traveled the seaside towns it did chroma and painting for two that i know of um just an amazing story how the kids loved her how the people in Englefield Green where she was staying would um, react to her and how they spoke of her after the time as well and we've got quotes from people like Donald Sindon, Norman Wisdom, obviously Olivier, Dame Sybil Thorndike uh, and so on and then of course the people that weren't famous that were behind the scenes absolutely fantastic book it was a five star for me it's going to be it's about Marilyn and it's actually a good book about Marilyn it's not full of scandal it does say about all the troubles she had and how troublesome she could be uh, she, so Michelle doesn't gloss over that even though she's a huge Marilyn fan if, if Marilyn was trouble at any point she will tell you she does not gloss over it we all know Marilyn had her problems but Michelle doesn't gloss over them and say well you know you know it's something you know. it was like this is what happened this is what she did we know she had problems, but is that excusable? You know, I mean, she's not like a diva of today where they demand I must have only orange flowers and five ice cubes in my drink and all that. She didn't do stuff like that. But there were, you know, it was more about her being perfect. Um, she had to look perfect. She wanted to be, the quote that she said was, I want to be the best that I can be. And unfortunately, to be the best it could be, sometimes she took it out, you know, the wrong way. She was late, she was scared, and it's sad, but she left us a wonderful legacy of films. Prince of the Showgirl is just beautiful. Go and watch it. It's beautifully photographed, including the overly long scene in the Abbey when they're crowning the new king. But the look on Marilyn's face in that scene is just exquisite, and I do recommend that film. So do go and watch it. So yeah, that was the 5 out of 5. I think it's the only 5 out of 5 I gave in the month, I think. I'm having a look now. Not many more books. I mean, oh well, technically, but mm, technically not. So, yes, fantastic book. Love it. Next, I read my classic, which was Dracula. This is a reread for me. I have read it before a few years ago. I still haven't changed my rating. For me, it's still a three out of five. The reason for this is we all know the story of Dracula, so I'm not going to go into the plot. You know it. But for me, it's all talk and no trousers. Um, the bits where Dracula is doing what he does and they catch him in the act and all that, fantastic. There's a lot of, obviously, they're writing diaries and letters and things, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. It's just reality. It's just when it comes to the end, when they've chased Dracula over Eastern Europe and they've finally got him and they're at Castle Dracula and it's blinking your Mrs. Death. Literally, I read it and I had to go back and read it again. So I thought, wow, is that it? You know, you thought, I thought he'd be, you know, at least be harder to kill. This is Dracula. Um... Yes, this class is a gothic horror, but I don't find it to be a horror story in the way we think of a horror story today. It's still a good book. I still really enjoy it. I love 
the poetry and the language, uh, you know, and the way that it's, it is done in letters and diaries, you know, diary entry of Mina Harker, diary entry of John, of John Stewart and so on. I think that's very clever, very well done. But I do think that Dracula's death is a bit of a letdown. It's all over far too quick. It's blinking, you miss it. He's gone. And it's and you're like, this is supposed to be the most feared creature in Eastern Europe and you've, he's just dead suddenly. You, you know, it should have been a bit more difficult than just chasing him across Europe. But that's just me. It's still a good book, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I read the first book in a series called The Dynasty. It's by Cynthia Harrod Eagles. Now it's actually book two. I don't have book one. I thought I did, but I don't. And uh, but book two is set in the Tudor period, which is really interesting. Um, yeah, you know, so you've got uh, Henry VIII and his six wives. We go through them all very quickly. <laughs> but basically, you're focusing on the story of the Morland family. Uh, Paul Morland is the head of the family. Um, he has a son named Amos and his son's a bit of a twat. Uh, Paul, however, is a very benevolent uh, landowner. He treats his tenants and the people of the surrounding villages with a lot of respect and care. Uh, he has a niece named Nanette, although he doesn't get on with her father because he's jealous of the way that his brother is, or his half-brother, I think, is still very beloved by the people more than he is Paul really has to try but you do come to love him you come to understand him he was forced into a marriage as most people were back in these days with a woman he didn't love he then met a woman he fell in love with they had a son together and yes he does come back and it's all trouble um, she dies of the sweats which is a plague I think it's one of the plagues that hit the country at that time a lot of people died including Nanette's father he takes uh, care of his nieces and nephews his son's all right but his beloved Ursula dies and his um, son from the his illegitimate son is sent off to live at other places because his real legitimate son doesn't want him around because he's, he's jealous so the poor illegitimate son feels like he's not loved and wants to get revenge anyway they all all this happens in the end both his sons end up dead and he's the only survivor and he um, Anyway, that's that. And Nanette goes to court. She becomes lady in waiting to Anne Boleyn and stays as a lady in waiting when she becomes queen. And in this story, she's actually the one that puts the cap on her head uh, at her execution. Um, luckily, she doesn't catch the eye of Henry VIII because Anne Boleyn was a lady in waiting at the same time uh, before she became queen. And, and Henry VIII does remember her later on when he's marrying Catherine Howard. That the last wife he has been he had so many wives i can't remember um she's friends with cat as well and um, the one that survived and yeah it's it's not my sort of book normally but do you know what? i was really drawn in it's so well written i really really enjoyed it now there are 30 odd books in this series and i have the majority of them up on the top they're not on my official tbr because i didn't know whether or not i was going to enjoy it but i really did so if i get a chance i might pull another one this month i might not i'll have to see how it goes but yeah, so I also read that one. So yes, that was good for me. It's not my kind of book, but I loved it. I gave it four stars. Was that it? And finally, I finally finished listening to, yeah, I don't like this cover, Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. This is the other five star read, but it would have been a five star read originally. It's one of my favorite Terry Pratchett's. In this book, um, the auditors, who are the overseers of the universe, have decided they want to get rid of the Hogfather, who is like our Father Christmas, our Santa Claus. And so, because he's got assassins killing him in a very, very clever way, Death has taken on the Hogfather's duties of riding on his sleigh with his pigs and delivering all the toys to the children over the course of the night. Now, Death's granddaughter, Susan, is drawn into this because while he's doing that nobody's claiming souls um so she needs to find out what's going on so she makes her way to the castle of bones which is where the hogfather resides and it's all icy and beautiful where she meets the oh god of hangovers and they go on their journey to try and save the hogfather we meet some fabulous characters in this book we've got obviously we've got the wizards we've got death we've got the death of rats 
um, we've got the O oh God, we've got the God of the washing machine, <laughs> so the Sock Eater, which I think is hysterical, I love the Sock Eater. Um, we meet Hex, the thinking engine, who's got an anthill inside. Oh yeah. It is just so... Oh, this is Terry Pratchett at his best. It is clever, it is witty, it is funny. It contains one of my favourite quotes, which is the quote about the humans being interesting because they invented boredom in you know it's, it's along the lines of the the film version states uh, um humans are so interesting in a universe filled with wonders they created boredom it's slightly different in the book but that's the film version it's one of my favorite quotes I, I love this book and yeah I was so glad I started listening to it before Christmas and I finally finished it in February and I've started a new audiobook but uh, well I'll get to finish that who knows because I'm hit and miss when I listen to them so those are all the books I read in February. We're into March and I've already finished three. And it's only the second. That's because I was halfway through one ebook. I had started reading Bombshell, which is a book about Marilyn, and I wanted to finish it so I can do some TikToks on it. And I'll do a video on here, but that won't be tonight. I'll be doing that tomorrow now because I'm too tired. And I was halfway through Mallory Towers, uh, the second term or second form, whatever it's called. And I wanted to finish that, so I have. Next book on the list is Stephen King, yay! So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you think of them. Have I inspired you to try any of them? Let me know in the comments below. And I will try and do some more book videos in the future. Is there anything bookish you want to see? So away from the colouring, which I love. Is there anything you want to see? Do you want to see some more uh, Marilyn books? Uh, do you want me to do some in-depth information on some of the other books or some of the authors? Let me know what you want to see on the channel. I'll be happy to make it. I'll add it to my list of, of videos I need to do. But that's it for tonight, and I will see you soon. Bye, everybody.